So I think that uh, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, elements for, to start the discussion. Um, so we have been really able to, thanks to you, to, to see that uh, these archives, that these voices from the past that are such powerful objects that are also very fragile and also multidimensional in the sense that uh, they can be addressed from many different points of view and that is no, uh, it's not uh, by chance that we uh, made this into also a shock cafe and I would say a shock uh, WP3 uh, work package 3 cafe because uh, it's really where we deal with vocabularies and shared vocabularies so that uh, when we you bring together different perspectives of the, from different uh, disciplines um, you can uh, enable people to access uh, uh, the data that uh, that makes sense to them that uh, are described also with uh, with the terminology and the vocabularies that, uh, that are uh, relevant. And in this case, I see that it's a very important and discussion here to the one that was uh, uh, just mentioned by Claire about uh, how to index, how to describe these, uh, this, these data so that in one collection, you may have several, several very different topics. And of course, there is uh, this uh, initiative uh, that Silvia mentioned of Ademecum which uh, I think that it uh, could and should probably be replicated. I don't know if just a translation is enough or whether we should uh, transpose the Vademecum experience uh, to other countries. Uh, I mean, including not the, just the result, but the whole process. Uh, anyway, I think that uh, that was just uh, me saying a couple of things to allow you to prepare uh, the, for the discussion and um, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if anyone has questions to ask here, they can just open their mic and uh, uh, they're welcome to uh, ask their questions live. If I may add something, Francesca, uh, it, it is true that uh, the Italian experience is, I think, a good one uh, to discuss and to share, but um, I had the, the idea of the, of the Vademecum uh, looking at this book, which Veronique knows very well, that is to say, La Diffusion Numérique des Données and Social Science uh, and Humanities. Uh, sorry for my, for my French. Uh, it, it was like the Guide de Bonne Pratique, Ethique et Juridique. Uh, so when I participated in this uh, experience, I thought, why, why in Italy there is nothing similar? So we start thinking about that and we try to prepare something more practical, if I may say, because this, this is a book which is uh, for scholars, not, not for people at the very beginning of their work, but I think that this was a, a good starting point for me knowing the French experience, to try to translate it in, in the Italian domain. And if I may, listening to Claire and uh, Sylvia, I was found, uh, thinking about uh, that now it's important for the archivists to change their mind and uh, take care of the emotional, uh, with, the, with the sound archive, take care and catalog also all the emotional, uh, uh, power of the archive, because first uh, by we had we have also a, a guideline and the best practices to catalog sound archives uh, in France, and it's a collective book. But when we we worked uh, on this uh, best practices book, um, we we were we were very uh, um, we 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 the. It was very important for us to, to put the sound um, at the same level of the, the other archives, the photographs of the paper and the, uh, the other archives, the classical archives. But I think we have now to, to put also what is the, the la chair, I don't know, the, 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 what is different with the sound? We have also to put this emotional power of the sound in the catalog and and we are trying now in the sound archive in Aix en Provence and uh, in the other centers to 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 reflect about it. 
I don't know what do you think about it because I know that linguists uh, maybe are different uh, with the use of the of the sound. To be honest, I don't think that we have only linguists in the Claren community. Actually, there's uh, <laughs> all sorts of of scientists. Uh, maybe uh, you could um, the part some of the participants if they want to share uh, their background and tell us what what to draw them to this uh, cafe uh, just to break the ice. Hello. I'll try to break the ice. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for all the ideas, suggestions, and many things that I, really, I found out about today. Even though I'm a linguist, I'm here with a colleague, uh, Elia, who's a mathematician and he's an expert in machine learning. We are part of an informal team that has been conducting a, a project on an oral archive uh, related to a neighborhood in Modena, which is our hometown. It's called Villaggio Artigiano, Artisan Village. And it's part of a, uh, a bigger project that has been uh, uh, conducted by different associations, uh, the University of Modena, Istituto Storico, and so on. So the reason why we are here is because we are the two uh, people involved in treating the linguistic data, but also treating the oral sources, which for us, at least for this project, they include not only interviews, but also... <clears throat> posters and uh, promotional materials that were written, that were self-produced by the artisans in the 60s, so right after the, 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 the village, as, as it is called, so the neighborhood was created. So we're trying to uh, gather information and also we're trying also to uh, make contact with, uh, with your reality, with your uh, network, because we are currently trying to... Um, let's say, upgrade the project, so to make it more official, also thanks to the collaboration with the University of Modena and Instituto Storico. But many of the things that you have mentioned today uh, have already been very uh, helpful, because at least the first thing that comes to mind is to see that we're not alone, which is always a, a wonderful sensation. And then uh, the other thing is... Uh, but maybe uh, this is more a question that Elia sh should ask. I will try to summarize it. We have found a lot of difficulty in building a network, which is exactly what uh, Professor, um, sorry, Calamai was, was, was saying earlier. So the difficulty, at least in the Italian, let's call it situation, to put together people from different perspectives and disciplines. So I was wondering whether uh, the people from, from, the, from, the, from, from, from France could uh, provide a bit more details as to how practically uh, the, the involvement was, 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 was made. Because uh, we currently in the team, there are, it, that, there's me, I'm a linguist, there's an architect, two historians, one specialized in oral uh, history, there's a, per, there's a programmer specialized in machine learning, programmers specialized in other fields, but we are, try, we, we are finding it fairly difficult to um, create, let's say, an academic common ground. I don't know if this sounds uh, comprehensible. I'll, I'll try to find a better word. Uh, if I can come up with a better word, uh, I will use it. But we are, we are finding it fairly um, hard to uh, discover how to make all these things work together. So one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I'm here is because I would like to find out more about your experiences and um, I've already bookmarked all the links and the tools, which I will study in the, in the next weeks. Thanks a lot. I don't know who wants to start. I think that uh, both of you are called into, uh, into question. Maybe Silvia can start and then Veronique can continue. Um, as for the creation of, of a network, uh, I have to say that it was the most the, the difficult part of the of the enterprise because we we first of all at, at the university level oral historians do, do not usually speak with linguists linguists do not usually speak with uh 
let's say, other, other people in other field of knowledge. So the very first thing is try to, to find a network uh, in the academia. The most difficult thing was outside academia, try to work with institutions like Istituti Storici per la Resistenza, who were involved in our network with the uh, foundations and with the ministry, Ministry of uh, Cultural Heritage, uh, where um, people uh, work with a very different perspective on oral archives from, from the one that we usually have when we are doing research. They are not doing research, they are looking at oral archives with different glasses, very, very different glasses. So we, 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 we the, this Vademecum costs from a personal point of view, a lot of time and also of discussion, also not, not very pleasant discussion, but at the end we managed to prepare uh, a shared text. Although there were very, very different visions, first of all, on the definition of oral sources, we didn't find a common definition. And that was the first problem, because linguists uh, see, uh, see the problem from a, a different point of view uh, with respect to archivists, archivists or even uh, uh, documentalists we are, who work with different uh, taxonomies and different uh, uh, vocabulary. So this was the very first problem, but I think that maybe if you are interested, you can look, I will put in the chat the link of the, uh, of the text we, we produced, and maybe I think you can also join you and with your research group, some of our informal meetings in order to have an idea and to verify whether uh, this product could be suitable for your work or not. It is intended for uh, public use. So uh, I hope, I really hope that it could be useful for your research, but because it was done as exactly for people working with oral sources. Thank you. Veronique wanted to add something to, to this. No, I, um, maybe my, my experience is different because I am an archivist and my idea when, when I work the, I, in the Sound Archive, we have all the discipline, uh, all the topics in, uh, in our um, archive. And the idea is, is to, to work with the standards and the and to, 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 as I said before, the idea was at first was to put the sound at the same, same level at the classical archives. Now we are thinking of what we have different, but at the beginning for us, it was really, and you spoke about at the, in the first slide, you, you present the fair principles. Uh, findable, interoperable, uh, accessible, and reusable. And for us, sound has to be uh, in these uh, principles, uh, anchored in these principles, and, and for that, uh, not different than the other. We have to find, uh, to, 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 to catalog it as archivist like the other object. But uh, with the presentation of, of Claire, um, I, I was thinking also that it's important, and now it, we, I don't know how we will do it, to have this, to, 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 to enhance this difference of the sound with the emotional uh, uh, object. I think that I don't know if this answers uh, your questions, Matteo. Thanks a lot. That's, yes, yeah. thanks a lot. And as I've also written in the chat, also yeah. to the offering. Thanks. So, and I would I'd like to add because of course this is a the, this project is very close to home for me. So I I mean I think I can speak for Monica as well to say that uh, of course Clarin Italy and Clarin Eric are also at your disposal. And if you want to get in touch with us and see how we can help you more than uh, <laughs> you're more than welcome so now to uh, alexandra uh, for her uh, question okay uh, so i'm i'm uh, from the university of malta and we have uh, 
in the last 10 years, we've managed to digitize an arc, uh, kind of data from a survey of Maltese dialects, which was carried out in the 1960s and 1970s. I have two questions. One is related to accessibility. Uh, so the the collection is of very, for, I'm a linguist, not an archivist, okay? So obviously for me, quality of the, of the recordings is actually quite important. Um, but the quality is variable. It is in some places quite noisy because it was carried out in a, in a mill room, in a baker's, in, a, in an ironmonger even. So there's hammering in the background. The, also, the interviewing technique is sometimes really poor because they're kind of literally, if they don't get what they're expecting, they say, are you sure you don't say this? So in, in terms of quality, in some cases, the speakers are going in and out of dialect. So there are some recordings where the only elements of dialect are the words, the lexis. And the phonetics is not dialectal, it's as standard as my. So it's, it's very variable in quality. So my first question is, we are quite hesitant about making the whole of the archive publicly available for these reasons, because the, the, the data is, the quality of the data needs, a, you need to explain to people that this might not be what they're expecting, especially if they're dialect speakers. So we are we have gone for a very maybe cowardly way of doing it, and we're selecting snippets which we think are better in quality at all different levels or at some of the levels. Um, but that means that we're restricting accessibility. The second issue is to do with data protection. So we have been told that by our university that we cannot publish anything, any of the data, which can give away the, the identity of the speaker, which means that we have to clean up the recordings. And if this, the recording starts with, what's your name? My name is Sandra Vella. We have to mask the Sandra Vella out. And again, given a small, small community within a small community, the chances are that even if we leave in the profession, I'm a baker from Nadur, all of that information is part and parcel of the recording. So if we mask it out, it kind of takes away that stuff. And we've been told that the only way we can get around this issue is to go to the public registry and try to get a death certificate of the individuals involved. But again, it's an impossible task because these were 1960s and 1970s. So that's 50 years ago kind of thing. So do you have any any any, any feedback or anything any uh, anything you can tell me which could maybe help us out with these two issues? I can say that uh, we have the same for example the you you listen to two archives first was uh, uh, very old and in, is, was in uh, public domain so we can do everything with uh, with this archive, the second archive, uh, you listen to an to a sound of 19, um, 1982, uh, We don't have the right, but we have the right from the um, researcher. And uh, every archive, every archive in uh, in the phonotech. Uh, for every archive, we ask to see an agreement. We can have all the agreements because in uh, 1982, uh, nobody knows the internet, nobody can understand that uh, it, it could be online because uh, it, uh, uh, it can exist. But uh, we, we are trying to, to find all the um, people who are speaking uh, or the uh, the, the, right the right orders for example uh, near uh, malta uh, we had um, an oral history uh, um, project uh, which was deposited in our archive in 1980 it was in 1980 about the catastrophe of smyrna uh, 
Uh, and we found uh, every uh, right holders uh, in uh, 2005. <laughs> and uh, we put online as the uh, archive, if you have the agreement, the law agree to put online uh, the people. And people want uh, recorded in these sound archives, want to have their name online. Sometimes people uh, found, the, uh, we anonymize, anonymize a lot of uh, archives and uh, someone found uh, a, um, a right holder, his right holder, uh, uh, found the archive in the database because he found, ah, it's recorded in this in this uh, city and uh, he's speaking about something and he can find that it's his father or is someone from his family. So anonym, anonym, uh, anonym, anonymizing, it's not so simple if you have a database. And I think better is to found the right holders uh, and signing agreements and put online the archive. Okay. Anonymizing is, is also another problem with anonymizing is basically the whole point is, is if it's yeah. like data, the whole point is that it is data from a specific place in a specific context. Um, the yeah. person is not so important, the name of the person, but the yeah. rest is. And in a small community, again, it is possible yeah. to recognize this was my grandfather's brother who was speaking. But so, if you found the grandfather, yeah. the, 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 the granddaughter grand of the grandfather, I'm then, sure if you give him a copy of your archive, I'm sure he will sign an agreement to put online the voice. That's very and helpful. That's uh, what, what is important. It's to find these uh, right orders. Okay, thank you very much. And you can find them. Yes, I'm sure we can. It's like a <laughs> bit of a, a treasure hunt, but yes. And it is smaller, so we have that advantage because it is relatively compact space. So yeah. They will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Silvia, do you want to add something? I think that you've been treasure hunting as well uh, quite a bit uh, in your... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to, to answer, but uh, the, 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 the question, Alexandra um, raised two different questions. The first one deals with the style of interview. And I think that uh, uh, we, if now we are a little bit upset with that style of, question, of making questions, they represent any way, a way of behaving. Uh, the, and an historical um, documents in, in the way of doing field work. For instance, uh, in the 70s, we, we know that uh, in, dialect, in Italian dialectology, the, they were used to not to uh, record the question. They, they only record the answers in order to save money, to save uh, the space on the, on the reels. So, it is a sign of time somehow. And I think that if you, if you describe that style of behaving and doing field work, now we, we are doing field work in a, in a very different way from the 70s or the 80s, because we, we, we are looking also at the, not only at the interview, interviewee, but also on the, on the, on the side of who is making question. Um, at that time, it was not so. Uh, it uh, people were uh, looking only at the uh, for the answers, and not and they were not thinking about the right question to do. So they can give you something of the uh, of the spree, the <laughs> du temps. Let's say the time. It, it could be useful to to offer also to students in order that they have an idea of not doing field work, field work in such a way, for instance, also from a yeah. teaching point of view. That's right. At Thank least you. I use, I use uh, that, that interviews of the 70s in order to see, well, uh, that, that was a style. You can choose your own style, but know 
please be aware that at that time it's, it is important also to record the question, not only the answers. And that's uh, at least my way of, uh, of, uh, of seeing uh, the, the, the... It's not necessarily, not necessarily the case that our style is also the answer because we have, for the, the, so we're, we're working on two things. We're working on the old archives and we're trying to collect new data. And we tend to go with the more modern ways of trying to elicit data via a task. And the yeah. older people, the older people don't don't work very well with a task. So with the 80, above 70, 80, they don't work well when we give them a spot the difference task in order to elicit the words we want. So it's not necessarily, I think it's a good teaching tool. You're right, actually. It could be used to, to, to show what the advantages and disadvantages yeah. We, yeah. At that time, they, they usually asked for translation. How do you say this word in your language or in your dialect or in your vernacular? But now we are trying to elicit that words or that sounds or that uh, 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 morpheme in a, in a very different way. We are trying to do in a, uh, a indirect way as Labov <laughs> taught us, for instance. But uh, as, as for the second question, I can share with you what we did uh, in the Archivio Vivo project uh, with um, Monica Monachini and uh, Clarinit. Um, we, are, we, we are working on an uh, oral archive made by an ethno -muse a folk singer, let's say, Caterina Bueno. Caterina Bueno so, uh, did uh, field work, uh, but also uh, record is uh, her own uh, uh, performances, her own rehearsal during before the performances. So we had a, a lot of different rights to manage the rights of the of the speakers uh, of the. Uh, people that were interviewed by Caterina, the right of the um, of the uh, musicians, the 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 copy the copyright of of the songs and uh, private private issues, as you mentioned, uh, uh, for the people who were involved in the in the recording. So we try to uh, settle. Um, a uh, sort of legal chain in order to know at what stage we have to look for a consent form who could who could give us the consent form for the privacy issues and who could give us the consent form and for the uh, copyright issues and so on. And we try, we are now in the process of looking for all the people involved in the, um, in the archives. But in case we do not succeed in finding all the people, and it, it will be the case, uh, we, we can prove that we did the diligent, let's say, uh, what is called the diligent search. We tried to do our best. We didn't succeed. But mm -hmm. we are at the, at the disposal of the, all the, of the people who um, uh, may have some rights on the documents. And this is our way of behaving, Monica. If you if you want to add something, it it is a very painful issue issue for us, obviously. But we have to find a way in order to make things accessible and make things uh, uh, be uh, shared by others. Otherwise, we, we we keep our oral archive that we digitized and we spend a lot of money for digitizing. Uh, uh, inside our home, uh, it is not the right thing to do. On the cloud, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, maybe I can add the fact that uh, I, am, I mean I, I'm anticipating here on my uh, closing slide, but uh, the next cafe will be actually organized by the so for March in March uh, for by the Clarin uh, Legal Issues Committee, the CLIC. And uh, it's, uh, it is about topics that are relevant to this discussion. 
um, more generally, uh, Clarinetic and the Clarin National uh, uh, Consortia um, are also there to help. I mean, it's not easy, uh, of course, to sort uh, solve these these issues. The European regulation is strict, but uh, it's um, more and more um, harmonized, at least. So it is uh, not hundred percent true that what uh, is possible in one country is also possible in another, but. Uh, it's uh, things that I, I would, I could, I think I, we can say that they're converging a little bit. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what um, Silvia and, and um, Veronique think about it. I don't know if I, I can say something about it. Huh? It's, uh, yes, it's true. We are, the fair principle are, in fact, the objective of the European uh, project and our archive is uh, working this uh, kind of project, yes. Yeah, I mean, there is also this idea, exactly as as, as uh, Veronique mentioned, the fact that uh, uh, the uh, the need to produce fair data is also something that can uh, um, help us in this sense. Because uh, if you can prove that you've done your best, as Silvia was saying, then you have also, on the other hand, yeah, there is the data protection, the person protection um, uh, I mean, imperative, but there is also the fact that you need to publish your data, you cannot keep them in your, in your drawers any, any longer. So yeah, the problem is maybe it's, uh, these things are quite time consuming and that is why uh, yeah, this is an issue that needs to be discussed because of course, but this is be, goes beyond I think the question of oral archives because uh, uh, making data fair is costly and it's not yet cl clear who is going to pay this cost, this, yeah. this, uh, this, this price? Yes, it's true. But uh, if you have this principle, you can have some rules uh, which help you to, to archive your, your data. And after, yes, it's true uh, that uh, the RGPD, I don't know in English the language, <laughs> the new G GDPR. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> This new law about, uh, which is very, uh, uh, it's very huge for us, but in the same time, I think that the, that, that the law and all the ethical and legal rules help us to, to be more, um, more clear about our archive. So maybe it costs a lot of money and time, got a lot of time and money, but um, working in these uh, issues, uh, it's necessary and uh, help you to um, have a better context of your archive always. So, uh, any other questions uh, the, about the, the book, um, uh, the book and the, the, the these issues? I put a link uh, in the conversation. It's a blog in French, sorry, uh, about these issues, uh, ethical and legal rules. And uh, we, we ask uh, uh, pra pragmatic, uh, very concrete uh, questions, uh, how to, to work with an archive or, or to, to record a, a song, a traditional song, how to, to record a conference. Maybe Daniela wanted to ask something? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a postdoc uh, researcher in linguistics um, in, uh, at the University of Bolzano. And uh, uh, here uh, we have uh, some uh, speech corpora and uh, we are interested in uh, storing these uh, data and in um, making them um, available to the community. So I, I am here to... Um, because I was interested uh, in uh, um, understanding how to uh, start. And, uh, but now I saw the um, great uh, work done by Silvia and uh, her group. So maybe at first I can uh, read uh, Vademecum, and then if I have uh, uh, some other questions, I can um, write her or uh, you, I don't know, <laughs> because uh, um, yeah. Mm, so because I, we, mm, here there are at least uh, two speech corpora, one of uh, um, 
One is a bilingual corpus on Italian and Tyrolean, and the other one is on uh, Italian spoken here in Bolzano. So oh, we are really interested in share our data, uh, which are data collected in uh, previous uh, research uh, projects. So yeah, I want to just to thank you for this meeting because it was really interesting and uh, really informative uh, for me. That's uh, good to know because I mean, <laughs> this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. If I may add something, I invite you, Daniela, to deposit your resources in our for clearing repository. So you will have them duly described, duly uh, searchable, findable, and also uh, uh, saved from uh, saved from. Um, the, uh, let's say, uh, also uh, preserved for long-term preservation. So from obsolete, obsolescence of, uh, of formats and, uh, and so on and so forth. So please be in contact with us and we will uh, guide you in how to do with the deposit in the, in the repository. Thank you so much. Daniela, you also have a clarin, uh, um, clarinet uh, uh, member very close uh, to yourself. <laughs> so the EURAC, uh, they, yes. also, they have also a repository. I don't know if they accept oral data. As, uh, that is, Moni maybe you know, Monica knows. I think they have more uh, uh, written uh, data. Uh, they have, uh, they have uh, data for... Uh, uh, their specific uh, languages, uh, so also minority languages uh, for uh, languages spoken uh, in uh, contact uh, regions uh, like uh, uh, the Bosen area. So, and they, uh, they also have uh, learners uh, corpora and corpora for um, computer me mediated uh, communication. So, uh, but they, uh, they are not uh, yet uh, a uh, B certified uh, center. So the first uh, uh, national Italian center certified uh, as a Clarin B center and uh, as uh, with the uh, trust, uh, the trust seal of approval. So also certified by an external uh, agency. Uh, is uh, is our center in Pisa? So yeah, and we have to buy more store, get more storage because uh, we have two at least two uh, archives in the making in Italy. Here today, we found out today, which is a, a great uh, piece of news. Let's see if there are any more questions. Otherwise, we can uh, slowly uh, close the. Yeah, I see someone. I'm Marcia Gainfield. Uh, I work in a public archive. I've done some projects that are associated with uh, Claria in the Netherlands. My background is in oral history and things. Uh, my question would be I'm hearing like wonderful oral histories being collected, but they seem to be kept in an academic sphere. How far are you in discussions with public archives, with, with, with um, sort of expanding your reach? Because if it's, behind, um, if it's behind a wall or it seems only accessible to academics, what is your long-term approach? Like, are you just going to have sort of like fragments of a, of a dialect, which is fantastic? Um, but are you just going to make that available to linguists? Like, where are you involving the public in this? Or are you are you sort of gatekeeping the the process? Um, and and like, how far are you in discussions with like local archives and like training local archives things? Um, because I am biased <laughs> with uh, with with my background, um, um, and also. Um, I'm hearing a lot about linguists and oral historians. Um, one of my other biases is, are you talking to folklorists? Because they kind of have a lot of this covered. I know the French uh, institution is, because I heard um, Tradition uh, Populaire 
Um, so I got I got that a little bit. But um, yes, so I have many questions. If you could answer any of them, that would be great. <laughs> If I, I can reply quickly, um, mm -hmm. it's not uh, academic who are listening to my archives. Only people in the world who are searching the database with their name, because a lot mm -hmm. of people are, do, are doing uh, generical uh, research. You know? They are researching their name. So if I look at my statistic, uh, um, there are more uh, out of the academic uh, mm -hmm. sphere who are looking for sound archives. Second, uh, they are the artists who are using uh, this sound. This sound doing, uh, I don't know, because uh, when they send me sometimes, uh, oh, we, uh, we, we, we are re-singing this mm -hmm. uh, song I found uh, in your archive, or I, I received uh, last year uh, a little, uh, I don't know, a little film, a capsule, a little, a little video with my sound, my sound, the sound of the database. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, we are open. The database is open. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 4,000 uh, hours uh, online uh, with the ethical and legal rules. Mm -hmm. They are used by anybody, no, not only academic uh, peop, uh, researcher, and uh, there are not a lot academic researcher who are reusing uh, the the data, the sound data. Mm -hmm. We have PhD um, now. There are four uh, PhD who are looking for this uh, sound archive, our, our database. Mm -hmm. But uh, researchers who are, who are looking for uh, these archives, there are not a lot. Not yet, not yet. At the yeah. contrary, it's, there are not a lot. Mm -hmm. cool. But maybe, uh, 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 Sylvia, you have another experience with uh, that. I can try to answer to Marie-Claire. Uh, in, the, in the group of the Vademecum, we have uh, anthropologists yeah. and we try to involve also people working with museum or foundations in order to do something that could be useful for them not only for academia academia is not the main the main uh, mm -hmm. uh, user of the of the of the vademecum but the vademecum is intended for people at the different level dealing with uh, oral archives at least in in the italian domain it is is prepared and organized for the Italian communities and with, with all the, the peculiarities of the Italian um, landscape, let's say. Um, as for the, uh, the folklorist, uh, with Monica Monachini, we are working uh, exactly on an oral archive made by a folk singer. So we are mm -hmm. trying to think of different, of different problems involved in this kind of, uh, um, of production. Let's, for instance, the first thing is uh, who is the author of, uh, of uh, an, an, a song, a popular song? How, how can we, we, we deal with authorship and, uh, and uh, copyright in case of oral tradition and oral songs? Uh, which are uh, transmitted by, gener by different generations of speakers. So we, we have in mind this kind of problem. And we have to say that in Italy, uh, there was not, a, a, um, a, a, at least there is a very strong tradition of uh, fol folklorist, but um, as for the oral archives, the main, uh, uh, the main speculation, the main reflections uh, has been made, have been made by oral historians. Yeah. That, that's a matter of fact, that also from an uh, epistemological and theoretical point of view, uh, at least in Italy, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm speaking only with, with respect to my country, I can't speak of, of, all, the, of, of all the different situations in Europe, but we, I have to say that the main reflection was made in the domain of oral history. Mm-hmm.
I think that maybe we could uh, start uh, if there are no other uh, pressing questions, uh, we can start uh, closing uh, this cafe. So I will uh, share my screen ag again, just a second. Okay. Yeah, so um, first of all, let me thank really once again, uh, Veronique and Silvia for this uh, very, very interesting cafe. I think that uh, uh, it was really, uh, at least for some people who uh, then ask questions, uh, it, it seems that it was really what uh, was needed. And uh, um, so I uh, would just like to say a few words uh, about uh, how to get involved with, uh, with, uh, with Clarin. Um, so you have probably signed uh, up for the Clarin News Flash uh, uh, as you registered for this, uh, for this cafe. Uh, you can also check out other events and our also our uh, opportunities uh, for for funding. And as I said, there will be uh, more or less uh, one cafe a month, so that, that we will uh, we will let you know about other uh, such initiatives. The next one will be uh, in March, and I will say something about it later. So I think that today's discussion was really very fascinating and a lot of, of things emerged. If you have other, I mean, if you want to ask uh, any questions uh, also to either the Clarin Eric or to Clarin it uh, in uh, about ways that we can help you carry out your research, do not hesitate to get in touch with us. And uh, maybe a few words by Monica about uh, uh, about the opportunities also for from the shock uh, end of the matter. If you want to join uh, the shock community, you here are the links. So the links to the website, the link to the newsletter, and uh, and uh, the links uh, to the social to the social media so the twitter and the linkedin uh, account so you are welcome and obviously uh, we are also uh, very interested to work with you we, uh, and open new ways of uh, and new opportunities of collaboration thank you yeah, and Shock will also have uh, uh, webinars uh, uh, in the future, just like the ones that Monica mentioned, and yeah. the, especially those that are relevant to the Clarin community will definitely be advertised uh, also via the Clarin channels. Uh, so, okay, I haven't put the Twitter account of Clarin, but uh, those who are on Twitter probably saw because uh, there's been a bit of retweeting of this cafe. So follow us on Twitter as well uh, for the, on the Clarin side. And... <laughs> Finally, I can get to say that on the 30th of March, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Central Europe time, we will have a cafe that I think is a good uh, way to continue the discussion we started today, uh, because it's a cafe uh, organized by uh, the Clarin Legal and Ethical Issues Committee, which uh, uh, I think Silvia knows very well <laughs> as one of its members. <laughs> And uh, it is about uh, uh, rights of data subjects in uh, language resources. So see you at the next cafe. Mm -hmm.